gentlemen, welcome to the MAPS show, none other but Olumayo Kung Balogun. I call her Mayor of KD. How are you, Mayor? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing so great. Good to, <laughs> so, so good to have you. It's been a long, long, long time. The last time we saw should be around 2011 or so. It's been a very, very long time. Good to, yeah. good to, good to have you again. around. Yeah, <laughs> thank thanks you. for coming. Now, let's, yeah, let's go straight to the topic of the day. We're talking about the mental health perspective of late marriage and its stigmatization. Now, when we discuss this personally, I know you have a personal story to this that I want you to share with our listeners right on the show today. Mayor, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I'm so glad to be part of this meeting. Um, it's a big one for me. I want to thank God for bringing me in um, contact with Kunle again. I just got to see his stuff on, on the social media and I just popped in and then, wow, we're here. You know, so um, my story is a long one and I'm trusting God to help me shorten it. You know, um, I'm first of, uh, of six children and um that puts me in the spotlight you know and um i grew up um knowing that um there, there was a lot of responsibility you know um attached to the firstborn and then you know i had to start um chores and take care of my younger ones you know so the first chore that i i happened to be in charge of in my house was um cleaning up the living area so um, as expected, as a child, you wouldn't do it so well. And then my mom would be like, ah, bali oko bala bala, you know? And then growing up a child, as, as a child, that, that sank. And I just knew, okay, um, what she meant, okay, by that statement is sweep your husband's house anyhow, you know? So, so I, just, I just grew up knowing that, okay, I was going to be married someday. I was going to have to sweep my husband's house, take care of the house, you know? And then that began to form. For me like okay something there's something called marriage and then okay i grew up and i really I, I started to see okay people get married i started to be in the in their weddings um i was a flower girl and then so it sank okay we should get married you know when we grew up when we grow up so as a teenager i didn't date anybody i didn't get to see anybody i just um, i was exposed early to Christianity, thank God to my parents, uh, thank God for my parents. So I, I, I kept it clean, God helped me, you know, until I got to, into the university and then I got into a relationship with this young man who, who, who also loved God. You know, but that, at that point in my life, there was so much being on earth, earth that so much being exposed that um, I felt like, okay, I'm not in the right place. I'm caught up in the wrong thing. I should, shouldn't be doing relationship right now. You know, I wasn't enjoying myself. I wasn't getting the full um, I wasn't getting satisfaction, you know, and then I really didn't know what life really was about. So at a point I opted out. Little did I know that that was the beginning, you know, of the journey on this path. So I, 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 I started my life out, you know, I haven't broken up um, with him. And then I started to leave life, hmm. got a job somewhere uh, up north. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I got I'm listening. Okay, so I got this job and then I got to meet somebody else. I got into this relationship and then it was a case of we're helping ourselves to get married because something had told me in my head that I should get married, even though I didn't know why I wanted to get married. I just thought, okay, life, you know, had to play, you know, and then had been drummed in my head, take care of your husband. I was, I was, I was raised as a proper child, proper girl. My mom yeah. is the best, raised, you know. So I, I, I grew <laughs> up and then, <laughs> so I, I I grew up and then I got into this second relationship and then I, I just knew something wrong. We weren't connecting. We just wanted to get married. And then somewhere in my head, I'm like, I can't get married to this guy. I don't love him. We're just trying to get married. And then it got to this point. I said, I, I started to listen to particular messages, you know, about my life and about that focused on your purpose. And then I started to see that, wow, I'm caught up in the wrong place. All I just wanted to do was get married. So I broke the relationship and I moved on. But hmm, the story started to change because somewhere in my head also, I had planned that ah, by 25, I'll be married, you know? Oh. And then I said to go up and 25, I wasn't married. 
then the bell started to ring. Something is not right. <laughs> so I, I, I started to be on in, I mean, I, I, I was under such pressure, you know, after I broke the second relationship, then something somewhere in my heart, I started to feel something for the person I was in a relationship with first, because I, I, I knew, saw that he was better than this other guy. At least he had a purpose, he knew where, where he was going. And then yeah. we connected the beat it was just that it was me that wasn't really enjoying the thing okay. you know so i moved i moved um trying to see how he could um reconnect but at that point he had moved on and he wasn't ready to for a relationship anymore with me so uh, for the first time i was hard to break up i realized that oh, my God, something is going on you need to do something fast at that point i started to be under serious pressure my friends i mean and then to help my life I, I attend a small church and then we all know ourselves you know that kind of assembly where everybody knows everybody everybody knows everybody's story and then yeah. younger ones started to get married then reality started to dawn on me that okay there's something called delay that was beginning to happen to me oh, gradually i was losing it like I was being, I was, I was, I was, I was being so anxious. It was really bad. Mm. I remember at this particular mm. time, I was under such pressure, shaking. I was wondering what can I do. I would pray, 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 but I was taken over by anxiety, and I didn't find rest. I didn't find joy. I lost taste, you know, to to life. So, I, 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 a breaking, a, an interesting thing now happened. My younger brother. He had. He left the house at some point and um, he, he wanted to set down in the West. So he, he, he said that he wouldn't come back to this house again until he get, brings his babe. And he said the joke in the end. Okay. I was like, wow, everybody just joked about it. Bye bye, go. So he went, truly, he brought the babe. And that bell that had been ringing, he rang again. Like <laughs> at that point, I knew that, okay, I was, I needed to do something really fast. I needed to do something really fast. But then I just knew somewhere I can't enter into just anything, anyhow. Like I knew that this thing, when I enter, at least according to um, where, I, where I come from as believers, you shouldn't break your relationship, your, your marriage relationship. So once you enter, you enter. So I knew that I shouldn't be hasty, but then I couldn't help myself. And then to make things worse, everybody who was my set in the church got married. I left. It's either they got the job, they left, or something got them involved, and then they left. So I was there, and I started to watch the younger ones get married. To make it interesting, I was in a choir. I was um, the songs director for my choir, and then even in the choir, people started to get married, and then the trouble of ah, it is where the Lord will do it for you this year. It will not pass you by now, kid. I had to endure it in the church because they knew my story. And then the initial, the second person who had come on board, they knew about that too. And then gossip started to move around that, ah, they are proud, they are can you, they are can you. you understand? So I, I, at that point, I knew that I was losing it. So my brother brought his baby, they got married. Life continued with my pressure. Then, you know, I'd said initially when we first born, yeah. So, second person who was after my brother got connected to, to, to her hobby and then they came home and they were to get married. Okay. At that point, I knew that I cannot oh. die. I cannot die. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I promised myself that my siblings, when they're getting married, oh. I'm not going to put up any attitude. Yeah. I'm going to be nice. I'm putting everything I can for the wedding. That was my, that was my um, decision. So she came in and she came, oh. we, we, the, the wedding happened and it was over. Next thing, the person after her, and it feels like, ah, I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. First, you know, so much responsibility on you, so much oh. expected from first get yeah. married. Yeah. The second, yeah. guy, second guy, third. And then the fourth. And then before the fourth, I have these um, sisters from another mother. I call them like that because we were, were a very close family unit. And there were three girls. And in one year, all of them got married. 
at that point, I was losing it. Like, oh Lord, you have to do it now. Now, the fourth born in my house, that's the third person after me, got married. At her wedding, I gave it, I gave it my all. I did everything I could, but I knew that it was my breaking point. At that point, I knew that, wow, I had, I had clim climaxed. Every strength I had to take it, every capacity inside of me was gone. And then at that point, I broke. I knew I was broken. I knew I was just breathing. I knew I was just living. I knew I was just, I was just, I was just there. I was just there, just watch, watching, like heartbroken, like, wow. So I can come through like this and life will just seem to leave me. That aside, the comments that was, I wasn't hearing, but I knew we were, we were there, you know, that's a side yeah. At a point, I had to stop going to the prophecy because I had prophecies. This year, the Lord, I was tired of it, you know, and um, at some point, <laughs> yeah, at some point, God helped me and um, I knew I, I wasn't going to die. I decided I was going to live. You know, you get this, when you get to that climax, there's a point you yeah. get to from yeah. either you begin to do better from there or you begin to go down really bad. But for me, it got better because I I ran I ran to the word of God. I had to run back to what the Bible said about me. I had to go back to understand why I was made. I had to begin to tell myself things again that it's this is just one out of the many other things. Let us begin to go and dig up the other things. Strengthen them. Don't die over oh. one. You are not the world. You are well. You are beautiful. Your mind is mm -hmm, intact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're right. Wow. Yes, I said and started to channel channel energy in some other um, directions. So yeah, I'm that's here the, alive and strong. I'm talking that's, about that's, my experience. <laughs> wow, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's a, I mean, I'm going to ask about. Um, I'm going to ask you what you think is responsible for um, all this pressure that people who are, who are having late marriage receive, but that will be after this musical break. So, Mayor, just hold your thought right there. We'll be back after this song from Joy Salu, and it's titled Everything. All right. All over, but I know fit find one person when the love my life you do, when we do the things you do in all day, in all day. Oh, oh. Now you'll be my. For your soul, MZ Radio London, station on the hill. Welcome back. This is the The Mask Show on MZ Radio London and AP Radio UK. And this is still KP in the building. And I'm having Mayor, 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 Mayor of KD, Olumayo Kumbalogo in the building with me. And we've been discussing mental health perspective of late marriage and its stigmatization. Mayor Kun has really shared our personal life story or personal life experience as regards the topic. And right now, um, what do you think is responsible for this particular pressure that people who are having delayed or late marriage experience in our society briefly? All right. Um, I'll say that the society is responsible. Um, but you know, when you say the society, it looks like um, a big, a big, a big word. 
but the society begins with you, your fa the immediate family, your father, your mother, your siblings, um, the next family next door, their mother, their father, their cousin, their aunties. That is, so the whole makeup is society. Now, um, over time, we, we, we understand that um, early marriage is, 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 is very healthy, especially for childbearing. So, and then you're, you're, you're um, advised that get married early so that you can have your children easy. And truly, um, from, from med medically, it's, 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 it's um, better for, for you if you get married younger. So that kind of formed the rule. You know, and then those 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 oh, the, in the olden days, they didn't have much to. They didn't. They weren't going to school. They weren't doing so much. So after you had developed your level, the next thing was marriage. So that bold. That, I mean, that that came down even down to where we we are. So that over time, rules are formed. You know, and then strengthened in the society. So um, you should get married early. So so the society is responsible and then you grow up in a family. I, I'm, 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 I'm glad that um, I am not from one of those families who are terribly pressured, but I hear the prayer points every day. My parents pray for me every day. That is, that's some form of pressure, you know, so your family also is, is, is one. Your, then then I'm, a, I'm a church girl, I grew up in church. Church too has its own you know, addition, people who are thinking they're helping you, but they're putting you, they're increasing the pressure, you understand? So the society at large, you know, is responsible for this pressure. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, what effect, now let's quickly deal with that. What effect does it have on those people who are experiencing such, stemming from your own personal experience? What effect does it have on the mental health and then the general well-being of those people? Okay, the effect is there's the, 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 the mountain pressure on you. Something picks it up on, from, from, from them and begins to ring the bell inside of you. Like I said initially, that I, I grew up knowing that, okay, there's something called marriage, you know, and then I'm, I'm going to be in my husband's house, I'm going to take care of the house. So that's, that's formed, which is okay at first. But when I now know that the time is ticking and I've passed it according to the standard that is set, there's trouble. Something begins to happen. Agitation, anxiety takes, takes you over. In, in my case, anxiety was bad. I was, I was, some days I was literally shaking like, wow, I need to get this thing done. I was under that kind of um, pressure for, for some time until it got, or I don't even know how I got distracted, you know, from it. So it, it brings, it brings anxiety. Then, um, um, depression, anger, unnecessary, you're angry, you don't even know where you're angry. Mm. Thanks. Yes. Like, why am I so? You, you, you hear people, you hear angry ladies in the offices, I mean, in love organizations. That is it. That's the effect. You, 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 you hear of them, um, people just withdrawn. They don't know why. Aggression, you, you understand. And then you feel that all of a sudden you begin to feel that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm disadvantaged. Something's wrong. Something's not right. Yes, that's that's the, that's the that's the part. Something's wrong with me grossly. That's the effect. Wow. Um. Um. Because of our time, we are running out of time. So, what do you think could be um the solution to this? What do you think the society needs to know? You know, how can we help? Um, create um, a kind of um, cushion for people who are having the late marriage to help them instead of putting pressure on them. How do we go about this? Oh, okay, it's two ways. For you who are going through, um, understand that there is a mold created by society. And you don't have to live by that mold. God is greatest factor to life. Let us go back to what the word says about us. Go back to what the word says. I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully. God took time to create me. I say those things. Words of affirmation. First of all, remove yourself from the mold. Re-inform yourself who you are again. You know, more like reinventing yourself. Reaffirm you who you are. You know, you are beautiful. You are bright. As long as you have your mind still intact. It's not all. It's not the end. And then... um. 
I, I was speaking with a friend once and I was saying that my approach to the whole pressure thing was I withdrew. I personally withdrew from church because I had to stop at, I started attending somewhere else where they don't know me, at least nobody would disturb me. And he said something that um, if there were those people who were always talking about that thing, I should have walked up to them and tell them, see, my life is, there's more to my life. There's another part, ask me about the other side. If this one is not working, it's not the end of my life. So you as the person, you have to understand that it's not the end to your life. Channel your energy to something else. There are a lot of younger people, young, younger girls there who need help to be taught. Be the teacher for their life. Channel your strength, build things, um, build things in the sense that yeah. I, 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 I'm an entrepreneur and God has helped me. I try to um, spend time doing stuff, get busy, get yourself busy, register for courses, do things that will reinvent you. But most importantly, those words of affirmation Make them your daily routine. I go over those words and they help me. They tell you who you are again. Find example of people who have gone through your kind of situation. Abraham is there. He had some form of delay. Job is there. David, all of them like that. Find them. Look at what they did at particular points in time. But be real with yourself. You know? know that I'm experiencing this thing. Don't try to brush it and, and leave it. And, you know, no. Be real to yourself. Then you begin to build gradually from that that point but thing is don't find yourself um, in that point where you're alone you can have find a support system i suffered so much because i didn't have anyone i was talking to all through i wasn't talking to anybody you know because I, at the point i got tired of talking to people because they're always telling me something i'm not doing and i'm doing everything i know i can you know <laughs> <laughs> Those wow thank Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, um, uh, I mean your story and how you overcame. Because I believe you're fine. You're doing good. I see the amazing stuffs that you're doing. Like you said, uh, being an entrepreneur, and then you are uh, you're doing you're doing so good. So uh, just keep on doing what you know how to do. Keep inspiring young people that you're passionate about. Yeah. This is where we are going to draw the curtain of the show today on the Math Show on MZ Radio London and AP Radio UK. Thanks to Mr. Soji Harmony, my producer, and Mr. Oldfield, until we catch you next week again, I want to tell you, stay mentally healthy. I'll leave you with a song of Oldfield's featuring Femi music, and this one is titled, Blessing. Blessings are new every morning. It's of the Lord's mercy we're not consumed. Great is your faithfulness, oh Lord, and nurse. Every day I wake up, Lord, I see your blessing. Everywhere I